The honour system is a peculiar quirk of British history, and for the most part, it's one we can be proud of. We dole out brilliantly British titles like Commander of the Empire to people who've led charities, built businesses and toiled in their communities for decades. We honour the finest athletes and lavish the artists and musicians who've blazed a trail in culture. We give an unforgettable red carpet moment with the monarch to our hard-working British heroes. At least, that's the idea. But there's a major quirk in the quirk, and it's a rotten one. Prime Ministers get to hand out honours and peerages when they resign, even if they resign in ignominious shame. It's supposed to be a way of thanking a choice few public servants who've dedicated their lives to good government. Instead, it's become a grubby exercise in backslapping for cronies. David Cameron was rightly lambasted for packing his resignation list with 62 pals after the failed Remain campaign ended his career. And not to be outdone on entitlement and impunity, Boris Johnson is planning a staggering 100 honours, including, reportedly, a knighthood for his own father, Stanley. Well, Labour's Sakir Starmer is rightly sticking the boot in. It, it, it's, it, it's classic uh, uh, of a man who... Um, uh, like Johnson. I mean, I, I think the public would just think this is absolutely outrageous. But the idea of a, an ex-Prime Minister promote, uh, you know, bestowing honours on his dad for services to what? Well, Stanley Johnson's many things. He's a friend of this show. Um, but a knight commander of the Empire should not be one of them if it's his own son who's recommending it. Should it? I mean, is that right? His daughter, Rachel, or his brother, explained that her brother's latest act of brazen self-service... Was this? Maybe he thought, my dad's 81, he has never been acknowledged, his service to the party and to the environment has never been acknowledged. This is the one thing I can do for him and I'm jolly well going to go and do it and I don't care what people say. Right, my father is also around that age and he's never received a knighthood for services to his vegetable patch, amongst other things. Uh, and that's not how this works. You don't just give your dad a knighthood because he's your dad and because he's got to 80. Is that how this system works now? But that's the problem with Boris Johnson. He doesn't just care what people think at all. If Vladimir Putin or Kim Jong-un pulled a stunt like this, we'd all howl with laughter at the scale of his comedic corruption. It beggars belief that it's happening here. If you resign in shame and disgrace, as Boris Johnson did, for lying... And after you've been, well, fined by the police for breaking one of your own laws in a health crisis, you shouldn't be allowed to then dish out honours to a hundred of your mates and relatives. Liz Truss, who was outlasted by a lettuce and crated our economy, shouldn't even think about nominating anybody either. There'll be no honour left in our honour system if it's abused by leaders who failed us, and it's a slap in the teeth for the many people who deserve recognition. Rishi Sunak should reject this list and scrap resignation honours before this source of national pride becomes what is rapidly becoming a mass of national disgrace. Well, joining me now is Telegraph columnist Madeleine Grant, Talk TV contributor Paul Arone Adrian, and by Talk TV's political editor down in Westminster, Kate McCann. Uh, well, I'll start with you, Kate. Are you in Westminster or are you in Downing Street? It's, it's so dark and mysterious. I'm in Downing Street. I'm Downing, Downing Street, Street, Street in Westminster, Westminster, in fact. Uh, it's a double one. Well, welcome to the award-winning... Here's Morgan Uncensored. Uh, congratulations for your role in our scoop of the year. I'm not sure what it was, but I'm sure you'll find one as everyone clambers onto the, yep. uh, the glory trail. Um, let's talk about two things. I want to start, uh, first of all, with this honours scandal, which is what it's becoming. Because I don't think for the life of me think that there should be a system where prime ministers who have to resign in disgrace should then be able to issue honours to cronies, and in this case, apparently, even to his own dad. Yeah, and look, I think there are a lot of people who will, who will share that sentiment. And one of the things that Rachel Johnson, Boris Johnson's sister, said there, which I think rings true, is that actually her brother doesn't really care about the reaction that people are having in Westminster to the nomination of his dad, despite the fact that some people are saying... You know, it's not just the fact that Stanley Johnson is Boris Johnson's father, that there are questions over what exactly he has been nominated for. But there are some fairly personal reasons why maybe he might not be the type of person to be named on an honours list. Some allegations of domestic abuse, for example, and inappropriate behaviour. You know, on the front page of national newspapers, too. 
I think what this says really is that Boris Johnson is determined to do something for those who surrounded him while he was in number 10. And he doesn't really care that much about the reaction to it. He's nominated around 100 people. His predecessors usually nominate around 60. So it's a bumper list anyway. And I think it's fair to say that this decision has actually just pushed him further out of some people's minds in Westminster as a viable Conservative leader of the future. I know, Piers, you might think, I can't believe we're even talking about mm -hmm. that. But people do talk about a Boris Johnson comeback. I think after his perceived misstep on the Northern Ireland Protocol deal that Rishi Sunak struck, and now this, it just makes it more difficult for people to see that happening. Right. So, Madeleine, look, you're a conser you, you identify as a Conservative, do you? Yeah, I would say so. And you identify a as a woman? C, I have to ask this question. Definitely a small C rather than a big C. And conservative. a woman? Yes. <laughs> okay, we have to check these yes. days. Um, so you're a conservative woman. Can you? Do, we asked 54 people today. <laughs> I, we counted. 54 people who we would normally use on the show to defend the indefensible when it comes to Boris Johnson. It's a kind of list we have on a file. Can you defend the indefensible when it comes to Boris? And 54 people's names come up and they normally say yes. Not one of them would come on to defend this, to defend him giving his own father. And I had nothing against Stanley. I like Stanley personally, always got on very well with him. He's been on the show a few times. But for Boris Johnson to be hounded out of office in disgrace and now dish out a knighthood to people, including his father, seems to me absurd. It's fabulously tone deaf, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, it's sort of, you know, of course it's going to um, renew people's doubts about the very office and the very honour system as it currently stands. I mean, as with so many things in this country, it relies on a host of unwritten rules and conventions that people are expected to honour mm. in, in not just letter, but the spirit of these rules. And it's so typical of someone like Boris Johnson that he would attempt to overstep the mark to the absolute maximum degree. Mm. You know, it's like... It's not quite Caligula nominating his horse as consul. It's not far off. It's not far off. And, uh, you know, perhaps the Times cartoon yesterday is right and perhaps Dylan, the dog, is next on the list. I wouldn't be surprised at it. all. Um, Paul, I speak as somebody who has obviously turned down a knighthood, and if you'll believe that, you'll believe anything. Um, I remain honourless.